on July 18th, the finance minister tabled his tax measures. Now, the tax measures were originally presented as a series of consultations, but those consultations came with draft legislation. They were far beyond just consultations aimed at getting feedback. They were specific policy proposals. And what we witnessed as a result of that was a slow but steady, good old-fashioned Canadian tax revolt. People from across the country, aided in many cases by local chambers of commerce and professional associations and groups like this, started sharing the information and promoting the advocacy that was required to push back against these measures. And it wasn't just the substance of the reforms that caused so many people so much concern. It was the divisive and insulting rhetoric that came along with it. In my first message to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau that first day back in the House of Commons after the summer, when I was talking about all the plumbers and roofers and interior designers and farmers and professionals I had met all across the country, was that these hardworking people are not tax cheats. Because that really was the language that the Liberals were using. If you look, think back, we, we know that they were throwing around lines, you know, saying that these measures were necessary because so many people weren't paying their fair share, that many people had set up businesses just to avoid paying higher taxes, and that many of these tools were only available to those who could hire people to set up fancy accounting schemes. Well, I really liked watching the reaction to that, and, and especially on social media. You know, we're living in an age where people from across the country can get united around an issue very, very quickly and express themselves and, and work with groups and individuals in faraway places in many d different areas and different walks of life. And one of my favorites was as I was landing one day, I was going through my Twitter feed and I saw a picture someone had tweeted out and it said, uh, hey, at Justin Trudeau, just, it was, a, it was a farmer in a tractor, it said, hey, Justin Trudeau, just here in my tractor, in my, what you call a tax shelter, trying to get the crop off before the frost hits. <laughs> There's a sh another one of a, a shop owner opening up the, the doors for the day, saying, you know, hey, at Bill Morneau, just here trying to avoid paying my fair share of taxes for the next nine and a half hours. And it was really that type of rhetoric that I think prompted that reaction and helped with the pushback. But when we look back, I think we have to acknowledge that the Liberals weren't entirely wrong. Justin Trudeau and Bill Morneau weren't entirely wrong. There were some wealthy Canadians who are using fancy accounting <laughs> schemes and high-priced help. <laughs> to arrange their fares to protect their family fortunes and make sure that it wouldn't be touched. It just so happens that if Justin Trudeau and Bill Morneau wanted to find those people, all they had to do was turn slightly towards each other, <laughs> gaze into each other's eyes, and they could have left the 1.4 million hard-working business owners alone for the summer. 